we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! And so we're going to sit as we listen to our opening hymn. sin once for all. And now let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. So we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who pre-repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep your life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us stand to say the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us in the place where our Saviour is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us sit for our reading. Our first reading has been recorded to it for us by Rose. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in his ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we'll have our second reading. The reading is taken from the first letter of John, chapter 5 verses 9 to 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed to his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you are giving me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and, all, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, for, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, 
I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost. So the scripture may be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. And I speak these things in the words so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they did not belong to the world. Just as I did not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world. But I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I have sanctified myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak, and may I be heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please to be seated. It's very difficult when you're asked to wait without being told how long you need to wait. It's very difficult to sit there and be at the mercy of something which is literally beyond your control. That was about 20 seconds, that's about as much as I could manage. But the point is really kind of quite obvious that actually we, we do get restless. We don't know everything that's going to happen. We do not know how things are going to pan out. On Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. We celebrated Christ returning to heaven. We came together at St. Thomas's, we sang, and it was a very joyful service. But towards the end of that service, we read in the Acts of the Apostles that the disciples were told to remain in Jerusalem, and that in a short time would come the Holy Spirit, that we now know as Pentecost. But they were told to wait. How hard it must have been. How difficult it must have been to just sit there and wait, knowing that something's coming knowing that something amazing is going to occur, but not knowing when. I'd like you to cast your minds back to when we were young. Back to those days when a, every birthday was an amazing thing. But to wait an entire year for a birthday to come round was so difficult, because a year felt so long. But now, of course, as we go by, the years feel much shorter, don't they? We suddenly find we don't have sufficient time when we would like more time. This is the challenge that the disciples would be going through at this point. Because if we look in the Acts, it says that they went back to Jerusalem. They went to the upper room. So by tradition, this would be uh, Mark's house where the Last Supper was held. And they dedicated themselves with prayer and fasting. And in the um, our Acts reading today, we, we hear about Peter going out and saying, we need to start recruiting uh, the new apostles to replace Judas. And, you know, this, this is it's busy work, almost. They say, well, what are we going to do? 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 I don't know. We need to do something. And it's really difficult. There's a term in the police which is hurry up and wait. And it was that you had to go race over to, to a job. And then you had to wait. And hurry up and wait was a really difficult job to do. Because being in the police, you want to do lots, you want to be do, yeah, you want to be getting involved in doing things. But if you come across a situation which you are not equipped for, which you're not trained for, which you're not allowed to deal with, you have to wait. And that waiting can seem interminable, because, especially when there are, you go, I, I want to do, I want to do things, I want to get involved, I want to do stuff. And you're just not allowed to. It is a challenge. It is a real challenge. But it is a challenge which the disciples face. And which I think for the last year and a bit, we've had to deal with. We've had to be in that waiting mode. We cast our minds back a year. And I've, I've, I've kind of written off 2020. I've got, it's kind of blocked up in my mind. But I have to keep in mind that it did happen. When we went into lockdown one, we were told to wait. And we were told that maybe weeks. We've turned into months, which now has turned into years. And it is a challenge. It is really difficult. But at the same point, that waiting has produced good results because actually, yeah, we're still, we can come back together, which is really good. I suspect it is 
the only time the church has ever missed an Easter. It's probably the only time the church has ever been closed to, pu- to public worship. And that's quite a, quite a stark fact. But the important thing which is there, and actually this comes out of this waiting, the waiting the disciples had, the waiting we've had to go through, is that we, that for the disciples, it was about getting themselves ready to go and proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus. They were waiting for the arrival of the Holy Spirit. And in a few days' time, next Sunday, in fact, we will celebrate Pentecost. We will celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples, giving them gifts and skills to proclaim the gospel. We have gifts and skills. We all do. They vary immensely. Some of us are good at being able to be a good friend, which is a greatly undervalued gift. Being able to be a good and kind friend is so undervalued, but it is so important. Some of us are gifts with numbers. Some of us are gifts with actually being able to talk and make people at their ease. Some are good at just being able to wind people up. I'm not sure that's a gift or a curse, but it's definitely something. We are all given these gifts and these skills. How we use them is what's most important. Because for the disciples, when we get to Pentecost, when they are given the Holy Spirit, when the, Holy, the tongues of flames come upon their heads, they could have said, wow, that's amazing, I can talk in all sorts of languages, I'm going to go off and I'm going to become very rich and famous. But they didn't, they thought, this is actually the most important thing, because the reason I've been given these gifts is so I can proclaim the word of God. And actually, as we, we hear in our, you know, in the, in the, in our gospel passage, Jesus is saying that these disciples have been dedicated to God. They have been made separate from the world, not to follow the well-trodden path that everybody else in the world had to tread, but to tread a new path to bring about this wonderful spreading of the gospel. And through those disciples, using these gifts and these skills, Christianity has spread throughout the world. We all have gifts and skills. They are all varied and all wonderful. Some are being fully exploited. I'm going to turn to Andrew, my resident stooge, and say, you know, his ability to play music and his bonhomie are wonderful gifts that he has been given. He has really utilized that. It's brilliant. But just think of the skills that you have. Think of the gifts that you have been given. How are you going to use those to the glory of God? How are you going to use what you have to show God's love to others? Because if we look at the disciples, we look about what they got, what they do, what they did. They did not hide it. They went out. They went to strange places. They went to places they never thought they would go. Peter and Paul ended up in Rome. We have Thomas who goes off towards India. We have the apostles and disciples spreading from these little Middle Eastern towns which sadly are aflame at the moment. But they came out spreading a message of peace, a message of love, a message of hope. This is what we need to do. We are called to live differently. We are called to behave differently. We are not told to act as the rest of the world does. We are told to act in accordance to what Jesus has taught us. Because to be disciples of Christ, we need to show his love. And to do so, we need to use the gifts that he has given us. May I invite those who are able to please stand as we profess our faith and the faith of the whole church in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Our prayers have been led for us by Sally Ann. Coming together at this time of prayer, from different places and emotions, we ask that you, Lord, untie the knots that are in our minds, hearts and our lives. Remove the have-nots, the cannots, the do-nots that we hold in our minds. Erase the will-nots, must-not, might-nots that find homes in our hearts. Release us from the could-nots, would-nots and should-nots that obstruct our lives. And most of all, we ask that you remove from our minds, hearts and lives all the animals that we have allowed to hold us back, especially that very sticky thought, I am not good enough, for in you we are always enough, just as we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Your world appears to be so full of turmoil and chaos at present. Every day we hear of yet more horrors from new strains of COVID in India and Brazil and other places not mentioned in the main news, through natural disasters and on to violence, terror, acts of hate or injustice in even more places. Please unfold all and soothe the angst and fear, particularly in the escalating conflict between Israel and Palestine. We do not forget all the other places and situations. There are just too many to give a list here, but they are named in hearts and thoughts, all joining up to you as connecting threads, a part of global prayer. With your guidance together, creating strong light in the face of darkness, and lost paths to work a miraculous change in how individuals and those in authority think, act and work together. To plant, nurture and grow the kernel of a strong spirit of respect and reconciliation. May it take firm root, growing strong and proud, turning into harmonised, supporting and peaceful ways amongst all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we await for you to send down upon us the gift of the Spirit at Pentecost, we bring to you all peoples in whatever way, whatever, wherever they may be. We bring to you those in dis-ease or distress in any kind of way, mind or body or spirit those named in our hearts, those brought to our attention on the prayer boards, those known only to you. All who minister in your world, both ordained and not, for the work of each one of us, for the presence, guidance and work of Father Darcy, Robert and Julie, and all ministers, the PCC and Elaine, our church warden, and David, Church Warden of St. Thomas's. For ourselves, Lord, 
In the words of the Psalm 73, verse 26, My body and mind may fail, but you are my strength and my choice forever. Help us to hold this in our hearts, when the way before us is dimmed by fears and anxieties, by too many demands on our time and talents, and take courage from your strength to walk the pathway, knowing that you are with us and holding us and carry us in time of need. Help each of us to nourish the bits of the family of man and the natural world we live amongst, that we may know a world whose population is caring and lives in harmony and balance with each other and the environment, preserving the world for the children of tomorrow. Guide us to wait patiently, Lord, and prepare ourselves for receiving the renewing and refreshing power of your Holy Spirit within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the love of Christ and his embracing love, we bring to you the lives of all who have given their life, that we might live ours in safety and freedom. All who have lost their life through despair, criminal acts, violence or natural disasters. Our loved ones who have crossed the threshold to your home, naturally or through illness. Named on our prayer board, in our hearts and those known only to you. For those whose year mine falls this month, grant the flowering of new hope in each mourner's life. May your love work uniquely through each of us, provide the nutrients and light required to enable it to flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we leave this service today and face the week ahead, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and bring each life peace. Merciful Father, accept Send these prayers Christ. for the sake, for the sake of, of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Abel, would you please stand for the peace? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as we pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a distant sign of peace. Peace with you.
who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who has called us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of your praise. We listen as the sanctus is sung for us. our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out for may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, who on the night before he died had suffered with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bring before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with our Lady, and Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory are yours O loving Father forever and ever Amen So let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The Agnes Day is sung. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen.
giver of love and power. Your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we pray together. You have opened for us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So notice there will be morning and evening prayer, Monday through Friday, uh, assuming that uh, my webcam now decides to work, hopefully will, God willing. Uh, on Wednesday we will be here um, for 11 o'clock midweek communion, uh, which all are very welcome to. And then on Sunday we revert back to normal pattern, so 8 a.m. BCT Holy Communion, 9.30 here, and that will be streamed online as well. And 11 o'clock we will be at St. Thomas's. And of course next Sunday is Pentecost, so we'll be celebrating the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples and sending them off to do his good work. Um, Helen, anything else you'd like to add? No, shake your head. Andrew, anything you'd like to add? Lovely, shake your head. Good, excellent. In which case, can I invite those who are able to please stand for the final blessing? The Lord be with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be amongst you and remain with you always amen before we have the final song, i'm going to have one more hymn because some good ones this week so if you have the same have one more hymn and then we will crack on with the dismissal Amen. Yeah.
please stand for the final dismissal. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.